it is your buddy peace and harmony with you here today and we're zooming in and focusing in on a very common question and very common problem that we see presented here um, that I receive at peace and harmony channel and that is really the feeling of losing one's authentic self uh, losing one's sense of I amness losing one sense of I am okay as a result of being in a relationship with a very emotionally manipulative individual who is maybe narcissistic or psychopathic someone who has really in an, an, enamoring um, uh, influ influence on you so in other words someone who you have given credibility to above and beyond yourself you've been enamored you have been infatuated with this person um, you might have been love bombed or you might have ha held them in higher regard than with which you hold yourself and so it is that that hierarchy which oftentimes is necessary in life to be able to look up to those who have authority and who have our best interests in mind who are helping to raise us up but then it's also the recognition and understanding that there are others in life who exploit and take advantage of others based on their vulnerabilities and weakness and emotionally manipulate them to feel less than more you know inferior than um, not as important than especially as it relates to uh, dynamics in a relationship with a covert narcissist or a psychopath so it is all about having kind of the wool pulled over your eyes with regards to that and then losing really what I call as losing the ability for critical thought critical thinking being able to think for yourself make choices for yourself in your own best interest versus erring on the side of what is best for this other person in other words people end up you know losing or letting go of all their own dearly dearly held values um, talents uh, things that they're interested in their interests even their life purpose to in order to adapt and adjust to satisfying the needs of this other pathological individual and oftentimes this can be you know done very subtly over time but it can also be done you know in a split second uh, decision in other words where you are just so enamored or you are so um, captivated by this individual that you then you know basically follow them no holds barred and it is this loss of the capacity for critical thought which is so very detrimental in part of the issue and then also what now needs to be part of the solution so when we talk about the recovery journal and getting back on track getting back on your feet getting back on your emotional feet getting back on your spiritual feet it is really all about kind of recognition of this and then the the, the know-how the learn what to do now um how do i move forward knowing this to be the case what can i do how can I recover myself? How can I heal myself? How can I get my energy, my juice back, my energy? Um, how can I uh, feel lovable to myself again? How can I begin to pursue other relationships that are more healthy now, better for me than maybe what I was attracting or you know attracted to before? Because what we find is those people who have been you know victimized or you know unbeknownst to them they are set, you know constantly setting themselves up in this dynamic you know they are attracted to this type of individual or furthermore you know they find themselves inextricably drawn to a person in other words they have a very difficult time saying no or going no contact knowing when to you know verbalize you know this is not good um i'm stopping here um, you know they're they're basically you know keeping their life on hold for additional weeks months years even just for one momentary you know walk in the park one momentary romp in the woods uh, so to speak and you know it is you know setting them back um, and because it's you know it's a, it's an inability to think critically have your critical thought function um, re-engaged um, because the narcissist as well as the psychopath have a way of disarming that letting you know helping you to feel um, like you can put your guard down um, reduction you know reduction of your boundaries but furthermore you know agreeing to 
an experience or a feeling that you are less than or you're you know you're not as important or you're going to then sacrifice your needs to take care of them um, whether it's financially um, giving up so much too much of your time foregoing your own obligations um, for you know foregoing your work responsibilities your civic duties you know for this individual and then you're, you're kind of feeling muffled shut down like you're silencing yourself you're not able to just be you're you're repressing yourself and you think that this is the new normal um this is the new okayness this is what love is all about when you don't realize your sense of self respect is being eroded and your sense of self-esteem is being corroded and corrupted because this individual operates on the fact that they can deceive you and get away with things even you know and then the challenge will be increased especially in the face of the psychopath you know right before your very eyes you'll be out to dinner and they're texting somebody else you know you'll be in the bathroom and they're texting photographing etc they'll they'll present these challenges for themselves because this is what gives them the sense of being in power and being you know control you know this is just business as usual for them um, we had a viewer who commented, you know, they're the go-getters of the world and they put the psychopath in the very positive light. And, you know, I find it not so positive if, you know, um, they're hurting others, they're lying to others, they're taking advantage of and exploiting others. You know, I don't find that a very positive uh, situation for a number of people um, to be deceived, duped, and lied to pathologically. So, um you know, realize that they, this is just business as usual for these people. And I kind of lump them together in this situation because in both relationship issues, you are losing the ability to think for yourself, to think critically, um, to, you know, be able to go, whoa, you know, this is not good for me. This is not beneficial for me. Um, you know, I am getting worn out. I am, you know, going against my, violating myself. Um, and you kind of catch yourself, but then in the, you know, people then make it in a, a psychological assumption that, um, you know, well, it's, it's better for me to trust this person and have them lead my life, guide my decisions than I can for my own self. In other words, this person knows better for me than I do. And then too much of that giving away, you know, becomes not in your own best interest, especially if you're not incorporating these or living empowered in other words having the source and values generated from within it's it becomes a real detriment and then people you know f feel that they're then lost you know i don't know where i am in my life um i can't think for myself i'm very scared i have social anxiety i can't believe i let this happen to me i'm shaking in my boots you know and then they have their the flashbacks and the rumination starting and they feel very unsteady very unsecure and the cause of that is because this person has been doing too much of the thinking deciding and judging for you which is outside of you and as they say you know um, a skilled sailor you know from a peaceful uh, channel does not learn you know does not become so in other words a skilled sailor learns to be a skilled sailor based on the choppy waters, based on navigating, you know, the inclement weather, um, navigating the rocks that are in the wake, um, navigating the sticks that, all, you know, fall um, right before you and you have to turn your boat. So look at it in a positive. Use the tool of meta, uh, metacognitive, uh, you know, metacognition and to see how you're thinking and then use the tool of cognitive reframing and being able to say, you know what, this is making me a more skilled sailor. This is making me a more skilled person. I'm able to become more agile and adjust. I'm able to navigate these waves, these cravings, and I'm pulling in the reins. I'm redirecting my course. I'm using my internal emotional rudder. I'm steering away from that which is hazardous, dangerous, going to basically destroy my boat or my personhood or my identity or get me, you know, worse yet, I'm caught on the rock. Um, and have just, you know, the current passing me by, having life pass me by. And meanwhile, my ship, instead of moving forward, is just docked on this rock, docked on this limb, you know, docked in this channel where I can't get out. So that's really kind of the feeling of being stuck. So if you can use that, um, that analogy to kind of look at things, begin to learn and think critically for yourself, 
uh, you will furthermore begin, uh, sorry, there was a call coming in. You'll, you'll begin to realize this ebb and flow and then begin to make decisions and analyze, you know, what is temptation and what is really setting you back? What areas are you really procrastinating in? And what lessons learned are you really sort of sweeping away? What lessons are you holding yourself back from? Why aren't you grasping this? Ask yourself, why do I keep caving in? Why do I keep um, getting in trouble here? Why do I keep getting carried away? Why do I keep um, getting sucked into this um, experience? Why do I keep um, you know, procrastinating? Um, what is the payoff for me to stay stuck? What is the payoff for me to stay depressed? What is the payoff for me to stay anxious? What is the payoff for me to not think critically? What is the payoff for me to continue with these fragmented thoughts? And what is the payoff for me to not know my interests? What is the payoff for me to not follow up on my interests? What is the payoff for me to um, live in avoidance? You know, what is the payoff? What am I really now inadvertently giving to myself to keep myself stuck? And if you a answer yourself uh, these questions, and continue to ask this, you'll realize how and why you're holding yourself back. Begin to develop more strongly that role of critical thought, you know, connecting some little dots, beginning to think in positive orderly direction versus negative orderly direction. Begin to embrace that, know what it is, write it down. What are my positive choices today? What were my negative choices today? Even if it's one, two, five, or 30, write them down. Begin to see the connection between your own path, your own higher self. Um, and what good choices did I make and what is really positive? What perhaps not so good choices did I make and where is it leading me? Not only is it, where did it lead me today? Where is it gonna lead me tomorrow? And where is it gonna lead me six months from now, one year, 10 years? You know, Look at the long range trajectory and see how it's impacting your life. And you'll begin to embrace the positive and the power of positive choices. Truly the power and then to bring you forward in your life or bring you back in your life. You know, leading you to one outlook or, you know, vista in your life that you don't want to be in or taking you further to another vista perspective and place in your life where you do want to be where the air is fresher, the view is brighter, You've, you're surrounded by people who can share and enhance and not take away from that. And also to give yourself a little bit more experience under your belt, to be able to enjoy a little bit of new choices, making some new decisions, having some new activities in your life, new experiences. Um, and all those will then accumulate and build and for a happy and fulfilled life make and furthermore for an empowered and healed life make. It is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today and I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.